Hi everyone, welcome back to Crafting at Whimsy Wonderland. My name is Stacy. I am going to do, uh, I think I've got two, maybe three projects here with the window clings that come to us from the Dollar General. Okay, so that's this one right here. All right, let me show you a few other things, other supplies that I'm also going to use. I have one of these seven inch wooden circles. This came from Walmart. It was 97 or 98 cents, something like that. I have one of these uh, plaques from the Dollar Tree. And I have one of these signs, the Harvest Blessing signs, left over from my fall crafting. And I've gone ahead and popped off this top piece and scraped off all the residue. Okay, and then I've chosen some different papers. And I have more papers chosen here than I'm actually going to need. But I wanted to make sure that um, I could play with it and kind of see what I wanted to do. And I was going to show you which pad this came out of. Okay, and all four of these papers came out of this Holiday Homestead pack that was a hot buy at Michael's. And these, that this is from the 2020 season. So you can get this in stores right now if you want this exact paper that I'm using. But I'm in love with the colors in here. There's lots of plaids, there's plaids in red, and uh, there's several wood grain shiplap type pages. And I'm loving the cut apart, cut apart page with all of the tags. Those will be fun to tie onto packages. And I'm gonna do something fun with this one as well. Um, and using maybe a metal word from the Dollar Tree. But anyway, there's lots of glitter and there's lots of plain pages. And I've just chosen these four. Uh, I love the black and white buffalo check for Christmas, but I'm getting a lot of that on my Christmas tree. So I'm trying to get in a few other things that will coordinate with it nicely. So I've got this red and black buffalo check, but I'm also loving this red and green plaid. It looks kind of gray on camera, but it is a really soft mossy color of green. And then these lines here, these hashed lines, they are black and that will help tie that into my black and white buffalo check. I also have this more realistic photo looking one. I'm not sure if I'm going to use that on this one or if I'm going to save that for something else. And then there's this dark green plaid. So what I was playing around with was this little truck and I wanted to see what it was going to look like on these different papers because sometimes when you put a window cling on top of scrapbook paper you can really see the pattern come through it but the way that these are shaded and the thickness of the plastic on here I can see the plaid come through a tiny little bit but not a ton I can see it more on this one because I can see the white coming through and then this one, I feel like it just kind of gets lost a little bit, so I'm not sure I'm going to use that one, but I also really like the way it looks on the red. So let's, let's do a few things. Let's put this guy on the 7 inch round from Walmart. Let's put this guy on the Harvest Blessings. And then I've got this little one here, and I'm thinking... That I can do the farm fresh Christmas trees and I might have to trim off part of the edge and I'm okay with that and I kind of just really like this little fox guy down here so I'm going to I'm also working some furry woodland creatures into my farmhouse tree this year I was getting I love the red truck but I'm starting to get a little too much of the red truck on my tree I know that's probably a bad thing to say, but I don't know. I don't know if I like that or not. What if we took both of these that have the animal? No, it's not going to come up. Oh, okay. Peeling it in the wrong spot. What if we took both of these and put them down here? Put it behind. Let them overlap a little. Oh, I kind of like that. 
Look how cute that looks. I don't know if a fox and a deer would stay put together or not. I don't know much about fox and deer. <laughs> but I think that makes a cute little plaque. We kind of lose the deer in there just a little bit. So what I'm thinking with my deer is I'm going to grab some white paint. I'm just going to use the plain acrylic apple barrel paint from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to paint the deer. I'm trying not to get too much off of the deer. This paintbrush is very stiff for some reason. Let me get a different one. I'm going to try to just get it to stay on the deer and not get off the edge too much. So if I can do that, then the deer won't disappear into that tree. It'll have a little more solid backing on it. And this will probably take a couple of coats. I took the banner that was on here off and I scraped it and I knew I wanted some pretty heavy paper to cover that so I'm going to use some of my paper backed burlap. Now I have oversized sheets of this that I found at a warehouse sale for American Crafts. So a 12 by 12 sheet, I was going to use this one right here, but it's too small. Okay, so you can do a couple of things. If you don't have oversized burlap, you can <clears throat> cut a smaller piece of burlap. You could use two pieces of this paper and match your plaids, but that sounded like a lot of work to me. Or you can do what I'm going to do. I went ahead and cut my burlap a little bit smaller. You will have to cut it even a tiny bit smaller than this if you're going with just a 12 by 12. And you can get the 12 by 12 burlap paper backed at Hobby Lobby and at Joann's. I've seen it both places. And just kind of trim it so you have a little even little edge going on. And um, just trim it up. I was thinking it'd be really cute to have it just fit right inside this white line, but then I realized the pumpkin shows. So here's my answer for that. I'm going to take some white paint and I'm just going to use what's in my lid at first. You can use chalk paint, you can use regular paint, doesn't really matter. Just get some paint on there. And I'm just going to paint the edges white. Okay. You can use the back side of this sign and and then um, cover the other side if you want. If you do it nice enough, you could probably end up with a two-sided sign. Sorry, that's another video getting ready for you guys. <laughs> All right, so this is going to take a few coats because it's thin paint and it's a pretty vibrant picture on here. So go ahead and get those edges painted out. Probably going to take two or three coats. Let it dry good in between. And you don't need to paint the whole thing. You can if you want. And if if you would rather not mess with um, gluing down paper or cutting burlap or whatever, go ahead and paint this whole thing out. Uh, you know, you could also cover this whole thing with the craft paper that you get at the Dollar Tree in a roll that they use for mailing things. You could do that. Paint it out and then um, you wouldn't have to glue anything down. All sorts of options that you can do. <laughs> So I've got the edges painted. They're not perfect and it's okay because there's not a ton of it going to show. I'm going to set this aside and let it dry the rest of the way. And I'm going to go ahead and get started working on this round one. I'm going to use the red buffalo check. I'm just back and forth on this one. 
Okay, so these um, rounds that you get from Walmart come with a big plastic tag on them like the Dollar Tree ones do, but they're stapled on. So what I did is I pried it up with a um, screwdriver, but I kept this, I put the staple back in because I can attach a hanger through there and hammer that back down and have a nice solid hanger on my piece. So if you see things wobbling back and forth a little bit, that's why, because I put that little staple back in there. So I'm going to peel off the sticker off the front. And I did take a piece of sandpaper to the edges because there was a few little splintery spots along the edges. All right, now I just need to cut my circle. And normally I would just glue this on and then sandpaper it off. But I am going to go ahead and cut the circle because the edges are beveled. So um, there is going to be some sanding done. But I'm going to go ahead and cut this circle because I want to make sure that I get my design going the right way. And by that I mean if I'm going to use that staple as my hanger, then there's going to be a definite top and a definite bottom. I just, I want my buffalo check to be straight. It'll just look nicer. Okay. So I'm going to take a pencil and I'm going to see where my hanger's going to go. And I'm going to put a little pencil line there. Just a little pencil line. That way I know where the top of my hanger is going to be and then I can make sure that my buffalo check is where I want it to be as well okay so I'm going to go ahead and use Mod Podge to put this down all right I'm just putting Mod Podge on both pieces I'm not going all the way to the edge of the paper one just because I want that beveled edge to show. And then I'm going to make sure that my pencil line is up at the top. And I'm going to make sure that my buffalo check is straight. Okay. Smooth it out with my fingers to start, just to get a good contact. Double check that I'm straight. And then I'm going to take my brayer tool. This needs to set aside and dry and then we'll come back and sand the edges off so while that one's drying this is kind of fun we're getting all a whole bunch of projects all in one video here while that's drying I'm going to open my plaque from the Dollar Tree and I need to decide do I want to paint it Mod Podge it what do I want to do and I'm thinking that this one I'm just going to use some white paint and I'm just going to use a, this is a chalk painting brush but I just want this to kind of be I shouldn't put it on there I just want this to kind of be a um, like a whitewash kind of a business I'm using the back of a dirty plate here as my palette and I'm just kind of wiping off the extra paint and I'm just going to brush that on really lightly I want to be able to see the grain through the wood or through the paint the grain of the wood through the paint I got in the paint section of Walmart you know back where they have the house paint and it's a chalk painting brush but it's just a nice brush for really moving some paint around uh, it came as a two, as two in a set this is the smaller of the two
I'm not going for full coverage on any part of this wood. And then I'm going to flip it over. There's not a lot of paint on it, so it's not super wet. And I'm just trying to make sure that when I'm brushing, I'm going with the grain of the wood. Once I get the white where I want it, if it's a little bit heavy, I can just go back and forth, move things around. And then I'm going to take, make sure you've got a clean piece of sandpaper. I wouldn't want to use this messy side because I could get some color transfer from that and I don't want it. So I'm just going to take off a little bit. Also use a sanding block, but um, just make sure it's clean so you're not getting paint transfer. I'm really liking how that looks. It just kind of pickled a little bit. And then if you want to take it a step farther, you can add a little bit of antique wax just around the edges. I'm not painting on the top, I'm just doing it along the edges. And whatever gets on there, gets on there. And I'm just going to be good with that. My um, antique wax is almost empty, so I'm just sticking my brush down inside there. Okay, that just gives a little definition to the edges. I'm going to let that dry up for a few minutes and then we'll be back and we'll make them all pretty. All right, so this is looking really nice. And I think we're going to go ahead and get our Mod Podge on here. Now, you can kind of see the outline of the deer where I painted because I got a little messy. But I think it'll be okay. And I'm going to end up having to trim the top of this tree off. So... I'm going to go ahead and Mod Podge over this entire plaque, um, not super thick, just because I think it'll be easier to do it that way. All right, so first down is going to go the little fox guy. And then the deer, I'm going to go ahead and put a little Mod Podge where I think it's going to overlap. And then go ahead and stick that down. You need to slide it this way just a little. I eyeballed it wrong. He's down there. Just make sure your trees are straight. <laughs> You're going to get some squishing out and that's okay. Just kind of wipe it off. If you have a baby wipe handy, that's also helpful. And remember, if you've watched any of my other clings um, projects, I like to let the Mod Podge dry behind the window cling before I go putting it over the top. And that is just so that I don't end up with little globs of wet Mod Podge behind my piece. I think that is looking so cute. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and clip the top of this tree just so that I can get a good seal without having to lift it up. And there we go. Alright, so I'm just going to give a quick wash to the top of this. And I'm going to roll my roller over it just to make sure that I've got it 
Yeah, see, I got a big old glob out on that one. Just smooth it out with your finger or wipe it off. Either way works. But you just don't want huge amounts of Mod Podge under that cling because it will take forever and a day to dry. Okay. There we go. Now I'm going to let that set aside and dry on that. And now my piece is dry here. So I'm going to take my sandpaper and I'm going to sand around the edge. I can go side to side or I can go top to bottom, but don't ever go back to front because that will pull your paper out. I'm going to leave this one being natural wood on the edges because I have some natural wood things on my tree and I like that look. If you don't like that look, then don't do that. Um, do what you like. Do what goes with your decor. You can also use a nail file. Um, you know, it's up to you. I like sandpaper. Okay, I'm going to finish sanding this guy off camera. Okay, I finally got this thing sanded. Took a little while. This is the one that's going on here. Now, I have two choices. I can scoot this off to the side so that the tree sticks on. Or I can center the truck and clip off a little bit of the tree. And I'm thinking I like it better with the truck centered. So, I'm going to go ahead and brush some Mod Podge onto the back. Not a lot. Ooh, got some of that red from another project in there. Keep your coats of Mod Podge on the back of these things really thin. You don't want a lot. Sometimes you'll get lucky and it'll dry just fine, but I've had some experiences where if my Mod Podge on the back of the window cling is too thick, it just doesn't want to dry. Other people have said they've never had that problem. And I thought, oh goody, I'm just lucky that way. <laughs> All right. So making sure that I've got my hanger, where my hanger is going to go up top. I'm going to go ahead and center my truck. Try to make sure that it's straight. And then I'm going to use my scissors and trim the edge of the tree. All right, and then I'm going to find my roller and I'm going to roller that out. Okay, now you can see the plaid through the truck a little bit, but I'm okay with that. All right. I think that's just going to look really super cute with a great big chunky burlap or twine hanger. So I'm going to let that dry before I put the protective coat on that. All right. I've got all my pieces over there drying and I'm going to attempt something different with this one. I'm going to put this down, but not with Mod Podge. I'm not sure which side was which side here. It's mostly symmet symmetrical, but not perfect. All right, so I think I will just put the glue around the edge. I'm going to use hot glue. Make sure your glue gun is good and heated up before you start this because you don't want your glue cooling down on you before you get it onto the piece. Okay, I'm just going to put a couple little blobs in the middle and then I'm going to stick it down onto my piece. And apparently I'm going to put it on crooked. <laughs> All right, because I put it on crooked, I'm going to need to trim this. 
and because it's already trying to be glued down it's going to be more difficult and that way I don't have to wait for that Mod Podge to dry. Trim up any little spots you feel that need trimming. I tried so hard to make this so pretty before I stuck it on. That's stuck down pretty well. And then you can poke your holes back through. And then my Merry Christmas Farm Fresh Christmas Trees. You know what? I think I'm just going to put a fun bow on that and forget this Christmas trees part. All right, this is going to be Mod Podged. So, this time I'm going to break my own rule and I'm going to put this on kind of thick because of the fact that it's going on to burlap. Um, the burlap is going to soak in this Mod Podge something fierce. But I am going to follow my rule of making sure that it's dry before you seal the top. Okay, and I'm going ahead and putting this on the burlap Let while I'm working on this. I'm okay with a little bit of Mod Podge getting onto the burlap. Not okay with that gobbledygook though. <laughs> so this is on pretty thick, just on this burlap. If you didn't use burlap, please don't put this on so thick. <laughs> If you used regular paper, do like I did on the last one and do a nice thin coat. Okay? I'm only doing this thick because it's burlap. Get it on there. Put it where you like it. Make sure it's straightish. <laughs> and roll it out. Okay? Now give it time to dry. And then you'll Mod Podge over the top. While that Mod Podge is drying, I'm going to do something fun with my burlap. I'm grabbing out my plate again and I'm just going to use, whoa, just going to use more of the white acrylic paint Apple Barrel from Walmart. It was, I think, $2.50 for that big bottle. It was all I could get at the time. And I'm going to put this on a piece of paper and I'm just going to come off the edge of my burlap with the paint. Burlap takes paint interestingly. It's, I don't know. I like to age burlap with paint. It's fun. So this I thought would make it look a little bit more snowy maybe help cover up some of my boo-boos from cutting it <laughs> soften those boo-boos a little bit make sure that you go from off of it off the edge and pull it towards the center you'll get a better look that way and you're also going to find out where your bubble problems are If you need to glue something else down after it sets for a little bit. Just make sure you're coming from off the edge toward the center. And I'm just using a stenciling brush. It's got it's round. And pulling it on. Sorry about my dogs. Somebody must be walking down the sidewalk. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to put a few streaks across. Just softening up the burlap. Softening the edges. All right, I'm loving how this is looking. Okay, now if you wanted to, you could put the holes here, so like you have two hanging holes, like it's an old-fashioned sign. 
But I just like the way that the white sinks in and it just looks old and used up. It's just nice that way. All right, this is bubbling up in the middle. Because it's wet, so I need to let that dry for a little bit. All right, so I'm going to set all three of these projects apart, aside to dry. I'm loving how this one's looking. This one's almost dry. And we're just going to let them sit and get dry, and uh, we'll come back and embellish them a little later. All right, this one's dry, so I'm going to go ahead and Mod Podge over the top so that it can be soaking into the burlap. Okay, so this one was dry, and I'm just Mod Podging over the top. Uh, the burlap is curling up from the moisture, so I'm going to have to re-glue that down. It'll be fine. Um, I am going ahead and brushing a little bit of Mod Podge over the burlap. I'm not trying to soak it. I'm just putting a little bit here and there so that it'll come up with an interesting texture when it's all done. I am making sure to get a good coat at the edges of the window cling so that it does not peel up. Okay, and make sure that you lay off all of your strokes across the window cling in one direction so that you'll have a nicer finish. Okay, so this needs to set aside and dry the rest of the way, and then we can come back and, and finish it up. But I do want to go ahead and make some bows. And I'm going to make the bows on this very similarly to the ones that I made for that last video. And we're going to put some turquoise into this because I think it will look nice. So I'm going to do another 7 inch ribbon and this one is two, about 2.5 two inches wide and 7 inches long. And I'm cutting it to be fishtailed. And then I'm going to layer in some red ribbon. This is burlap with a buffalo check edge. And we're going to need to angle that as well. And I cut that one a little bit smaller than the one before it. And I have some other burlap. I should just make the ribbon or the bow for all of these at the same time. So this is also um, about two inches wide. I'm going to cut it at seven inches, same as the other. And I'm going to do that twice because I want a bow on each of my pieces. And I want the bows to be similar. This I got on clearance for a dollar at Walmart. It was part of their wedding stuff. Um, it was regularly, regularly $4. So I thought that was a pretty good deal. I love this red burlap and buffalo check ribbon. It's really pretty. Okay. Let's get some... Oh, I forgot to angle those. Okay, so I'm angling the ribbon and each piece of the ribbon is going to be, each layer is going to get a little smaller than the ribbon before it. And that way when you stack them all up, they'll look really nice together. But I just am loving the little touch of turquoise in with the red this year. I don't know why, I just do. So there you have it. <laughs> I'm going to layer these up. And then I'm not going to put a ton of the blue in, but just a little. 
just enough to brighten it up just a tiny bit. I'm discovering that turquoise and red is just speaking to me this Christmas season, and I'm not sure why, but I'm definitely going to be putting some more turquoisey stuff in my um, in my decor for Christmas. These I'm not fishtailing, I'm just angling. You can fishtail them if you want to. And these are going to get crisscrossed. So that they'll show up a little better. Okay. Get on there. When you're building these ribbons, or these bows, you need to just stack your ribbon. Try to keep it in a nice stack as you go. Or you'll have to restack before you gather it together. Either way works fine. Um, I just prefer to stack as I go. And then I'm going to use some black and white buffalo in there. This ribbon came from Walmart after Christmas last year. They have their ribbon out now, so you can get it now. There's one, two... This one, I think I'll angle. I mean, I think I'll fishtail these. And this is a flannel ribbon. I really like it. So what I'm doing to fishtail is I'm folding it in half, and then I'm folding it in half side to side, putting my high end up on the fold, and angling down to the edge. Okay. Fold in half. Fold in half again. Here's my fold. Here's my cut edge. And I just do a 45. Then when you open it up, you have an evenly cut fishtail. <laughs> and then I'm going to go ahead and put one more piece of blue. And I've got a little tiny red I'm going to put in there. And that's just going to be angle cut as well. If you watched my last video, you saw me use pipe cleaners to secure my bows. I was just looking for the little pipe cleaner pieces. I don't know where they went. You can use wire. You can use twine. Um, whatever you want. I usually buy clear pipe cleaners for this, but I'm out and I haven't seen them in the stores. I haven't been able to find any. So I'm just going to fold this pipe cleaner into thirds and cut it so I have a piece for each bow and then once everything's all layered up you're going to pinch it together in the center and gather it up just kind of accordion fold it a little bit put your pipe cleaner across the middle bring it to the back and i like to fold it up to make sure that my pipe cleaner is centered because once you tie it it's you want it to be centered and then twist it tightly, but not like the jaws of death tightly. And then you can open these tails up of your pipe cleaners and it will help you get some shape to your bow. You can, it will make it stand up a little higher if you want it to do that, or you can kind of shape your bow a little bit. All right, pull all the little pieces so you see all the beautiful colors. If you need to twist a piece, twist it. Okay. And I'm thinking that that is going to look really cute up on top of that one. Okay. Let's do this one. All right. All three of these things, I went ahead and put the second coat of Mod Podge on. And so they are ready to go. 
And then I'm going to just take, for this one, make a hanger. I'm going to leave everything else natural. I'm going to go ahead and pull up this staple that was in there. And I'm going to cut a fairly good sized piece of jute. And I'm going to tie a knot. Okay. And then I am going to put the staple back into its hole that it came out of. With the um, knot inside of it. Ah, don't drop it. Squeeze that back in just a little. There we go. And then once it's inside, I can hammer it down. Well, maybe it would be better to put it in. Okay, well. Then I'm just going to take a little bit of glue, hot glue, over the top, just to secure it. And let that dry and then I've got a cute hanger so that's one project done oh I need to put a, a bow on it but we're gonna let that glue on the back harden up first all right and then this guy I kept the hanger because it's one of those nice ones with the little amulet or whatever you call it on the back and I'm going to poke through and make sure that I've got my holes as big as I can get them. I just went through and glued the edges back down on this because it had bubbled up a little bit from the moisture of the Mod Podge. So I'm going to stick that back in there. I like these hangers that have the little plastic piece on them because it makes them reusable and it, it, you don't have to tie a bunch of knots and it just looks nice on the back when it's finished. Now I wish I hadn't gotten paint all over the back, so I'm going to kind of scratch off what I can. And then I've got this one, I think it turned out pretty cute. And I'm going to decide if I want to put the bow. I think I'm going to go drill holes in it right here so that I can tie it. So I will be right back. Okay. So I drilled the hole in the corners. And I'm just feeding some jute through. And I'm going to cut off where it's unraveling and I'm just going to tie a knot. Okay. And then cut it off and tie a knot. All right. So if I pull that back, it's going to look like that. And just to make sure everything is secure, I'm going to put a little drop of glue into the hole and then pull it back. And that'll put the, a little bit of glue to hold that knot in place. And then same with this one, a little bit of glue. And that will hold the knot in place. Okay. Then we have our bows. Which I put up here. And I'm going to put the bow on this one. Right up here at the top. Oh, I forgot to wrap the centers. Well, that won't do. you got to cover up the pipe cleaner that's in the middle of these. And I forgot to do that. 
you just wrap it. You can put tails on it if you want. That's up to you. I'll glue that one onto here, right in the center. You can also fix it up with greenery if you want. Um, you, can do, you can dress it up, dress it down, whatever you want it to do. And so that's what that one's going to look like. And um, if you want to put some pine cones and some Christmas tree greenery stuff on it, you can do that if you want. All right, and then here's my middle. So I'm just going to glue that at the top. Hold it down for a minute. There's that one. This one I think is going on my tree. <laughs> this one I really like. And then this one's just going to go right here in the peak. Make sure that if you're going to store any of this stuff away, that you put a clear coat over the top of the Mod Podge so that pieces that are Mod Podge don't stick to other pieces. Because if there's any moisture where you store things that are done with Mod Podge, the Mod Podge will get sticky and it will cause it to stick to other things and you don't want that okay so make sure that you clear coat it clear coating it just seals in the glue and keeps it from picking up any moisture and life will just be happier if you do that all right there you have it my three projects from one set of dollar general window cling stickers um, i love the little red farm truck but I think I'm getting a little too much of the little red farm truck. I need to find some barns. That would be fun. All right. If you like this project, please give it a thumbs up. It helps my channel to grow. Let me know what you're thinking about this project in the comment section below. And if you have a window clean set from either Walmart, Dollar General, or a Dollar Tree, I also have a family dollar I could look at. Let me know what you found. And if you're needing some inspiration, maybe I have them too and can uh, do a project for you all right let me know which one of these is your favorite okay i kind of like the little red farm truck on the plaid i think that's my favorite one all right this has been crafting at whimsy wonderland thanks for stopping by i'll see you next time